Right guys, um, I'm back in action. Uh, this time I'm going to do a bit of a run through on a mains pressure hot water cylinder. So um, let's take a look. So this one's up in the ceiling space, uh, which is a bit unusual. Usually it's uh, down on the ground floor. Should have uh, two straps, but fortunately there's not much room to put another one. See, we've got a nice tray to catch any issues. First of all, we've got cold pipe coming up. This one's in copper. Goes to a pressure limiting valve. So that restricts the pressure down to max of usually 500 kPa. Uh, is adjustable, as most of them are. Uh, it's also got a line strainer built into it uh, to catch in debris and protect the other valves. Uh, then we've got we call a cold water expansion valve. Uh, on the inlet side, it's got a non-return, just a basic check valve. Uh, stop any back pressure from the hot expansion pushing back into the cold main. Uh, then it will relieve at seven bar, which is 700 kPa. Uh, we can check that that's working. Hang on. So let's hear that water come out. So as it heats from cold, that will just dribble out a small amount of water into this tun dish. Uh, which is then discharging, uh, in this case, into a gully outside. Uh, so then from there, water continues in, feeds the cylinder, just an isolation valve there. Uh, and then there's a branch off here, which is cold feed to the tempering valve. I just noticed there's a a leak there so um, it's pretty minor but it's just got the slightest of weeps doesn't seem to cause any trouble particularly there's a little bit of moisture there so I just found some problems with my own plumbing which is uh, I guess better than not finding them so been up here for a while uh, so that's a tempering valve that's adjustable um, it should be set at 55 degrees, which is approximately at that. Uh, and it takes the hot water, which comes off the top of the cylinder, because the hottest water rises, or technically it's displaced by the cold wood and rises up. Uh, and then it blends the hot and cold at that tempering valve and uh, gives you uh, water at 55 degrees, which is... Uh, Safer than having it at 60 or 65 or 70 degrees where your, your scold or your burn time increases really quickly at that high temperature. Uh, what else have we got? We've got uh, what's called a TPR. Let's take that situation off, but there is a, a TPR valve there. All right, so up here we've got a TPR valve. Take that insulation off so you can see it. Uh, so they should be activated once every six months just to stop the valve seat seizing up on its seat, the valve seizing to its seat. Uh, so we can say we've just checked that now. Back on just to keep it insulated. Uh, so that's like a backup really for the cold water expansion valve. So normal operation, uh, the element in there heats the cylinder up. Uh, it's controlled by the thermostat, which is set the temperature. So it needs to be above 60 degrees to kill Legionella bacteria. Uh, and then the water, cold water that's in there gets heated by the element, which is immersed in the water. That hot water rises up inside it, sitting at the top, uh, and keeps heating. It'll circulate with circulation currents until it gets all the water right down at the bottom up to temperature where the element is or where the thermostat is. Uh, once that happens, it turns off. During that heating process, what will be happening is a small amount of, there'll be a pressure build up. So you say we had 500 kPa going in. Uh, the pressure as it starts to heat will continue to rise until it gets to seven uh, bar. So when it gets to seven bar or 700 kPa, it will start dribbling out a very small amount of water, like a drip, basically. Um, and that'll just relieve that pressure. Uh, it'll keep going until the thermostat turns the element off, and uh, then it will sit there at 
at that temperature, which might be about 65 degrees. Uh, when you use water, you're drawing off hot water. It's going to come out of the outlet of the tempering valve uh, at your taps. And uh, what happens then is to replace that water you're using, cold water comes back in, fills up the cylinder. Uh, that'll reduce the temperature and uh, cause the thermostat to activate the element again and reheat that water. Um, if for some reason the thermostat didn't turn off, uh, then it could overheat and what you might get is you might get, um, you might then get the TPR activating. So the TPR activates under two reasons, um, temperature and pressure. So it'll activate at 99 degrees, uh, in this case 850 kPa. Usually it's a bit higher, usually it's more like a thousand kPa, but it's a relatively low rated one. Um, some insulation there, protecting those hot pipes, reducing uh, thermal loss. And the cylinder itself is actually internal to that. So this is actually a stainless steel cylinder, and then there's a big layer of insulation foam, and then that galve coating on the outside. It's about it. I need to go and get a crescent so I can fix this uh, leak. I've actually put a um, Instead of a Crocs joint like this one, I've actually used an olive on that. It's a bit of a funny nut. And it obviously hasn't sealed that well, so they're quicker, but um, to say that Crocs nuts tend to be with hemp, which swells up, a bit more reliable. So, took a shortcut. Oh, it's backfired a bit. Come on. Alright, here goes my one-handed repair video. I don't know how good this will be. Probably disaster. Just gonna undo this problem. Nuts, some water in. I've already released the pressure. Oh, mostly. Alright, well, that's the offending fitting. I'm just gonna cut it off and crocs it instead and see how that goes. So, I'll just cut that with the wheel cutter. Oops, let's see. There it is, uh, to spin that around the pipe to cut through it. That's a bit of a burr on the cut part of the pipe, so I've just used this piece at the end. Spinning around to remove that. So now I've got my crocs tool in, I've changed the nut as well to a slightly deeper one. I'm going to crocs that and uh, tighten up and hope for the best. Turn the water back on. So a bit of a recap, uh, so hot water cylinder. Uh, cold water comes in, foot gets filled up, uh, once it's ready to go into operation, power gets turned on, uh, it's hooked up by a sparky. Uh, thermostat controls the power to the element, so uh, when the thermostat senses that it's below the temperature that it's set to, it'll allow power to flow to the element. Uh, element is immersed in water, uh, and the element will heat the water directly. It's an electric element, usually 2 to 3 kilowatt. Um, and it heats the water by conduction, so the water molecules touching it heat up, get active, vibrate, rise up, because uh, they're displaced by cooler, denser water. Uh, and that happens, that process, as it starts to circulate, it's called uh, convection. So you get a convection current happening within the cylinder. Um, so it carries on doing that until the water's up to temp down where the thermostat is, which is down at the bottom near the element. Uh, then switch the element off, it'll sit like that. As it's sitting, it forms what we call layers of strata, so the hottest section forms at the top, then slightly cooler down to the bottom. Um, the new ones are pretty well insulated, so you don't get too much in the way of standing heat losses. Say over a day it might, if it wasn't used, it might uh, need to turn the element on briefly, just to top it up. Um, get the temperature back up to speed again uh, but usually it only comes off and on when you start to use the water so if you have a shower or something you might pull 20 litres of hot water out of it uh, which is mixed to cold to give you your temperature that you want at the shower from about 40 something degrees um, and uh, then it re restarts its cycle so cold water goes in as you're using the hot to replace it um, the cold coming in sort of providing the pressure uh, and then the, the thermostat heats that via the element 
um, and uh, carries on. Uh, what else can I talk about? There's three main types of cylinder. So you get low pressure, which tend to be copper. You can also buy them in stainless steel and mid steel. Um, mid steel is, is pretty common, although it's losing ground or market share to stainless steel. So a mid steel cylinder is a reasonably thick steel, about four mil or something, four to five mil, um, with a enamel coating. A little like the coating on a metal bath, it's the same thing. Uh, that protects it from corrosion. Uh, a steel cylinder like that also has a zinc anode. So it's a sacrificial anode. As the enamel breaks down, the steel will rust fairly rapidly. Uh, and the zinc will actually prevent, pr reduce that. So what it does is it starts losing molecules from the zinc, which keeps the steel intact. Um, so it's a sacrificial anode, so it basically breaks down, uh, but in doing so it's keeping the steel molecules all together. They use the same thing on steel ships to stop them rusting out when they're in the sea, uh, and it works quite successfully. Potentially you can change the anode on a cylinder, especially on a very large commercial type one. Uh, most domestic ones people don't usually bother doing it. Um, stainless steel. Uh, it's more corrosion resistant than normal steel because it's, it's a different alloy which is corrosion uh, inhibitive in its normal state. Uh, it's thinner and lighter than mid steel so it's much easier to move around. Uh, getting it somewhere like this in the roof is definitely a bonus. Uh, and then you've got less weight to deal with you know, supporting the structure as well. Uh, so stainless ones typically have a longer warranty usually um, 10 years, whereas the mid-steel ones sometimes are only 5 years, but it does vary from different manufacturers. Uh, you can also get cylinders that are um, solar ready, uh, or designed to have a wet back, uh, or even a heat pump connection, uh, so you can buy them with internal coils uh, that can be used for those purposes. Uh, some solar ones are direct, so they've just got an extra series a series of connections uh, and your solar circuit can circulate the water from the cylinder up to the solar collector and uh, back into the cylinder again.